My dear brothers and sisters and young friends, greetings. My name is Radha Sukhani. I'm a medical doctor by profession. Today, we are going to talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is a vitamin which has been given the status of a super hormone for a good reason. Now we all know well that vitamin D makes our bones strong. But recent medical research has shown that Vitamin D is present in every organ, every cell of the body and is vital to preserving health and preventing disease. Vitamin D has been assigned the status of a super hormone for a good reason. See, a vitamin has a limited scope of work within the body. On the other hand, a hormone has a universal presence. So vitamin D is a universal element within our body which sustains our health. Now, the amazing fact about vitamin D is that vitamin D is available to us totally free of cost from the sunlight. But despite this, deficiency of vitamin D is a pandemic around the globe. And why is that? Because Modern city dwellers have opted for indoor lifestyle. That means they have moved themselves away from the powerful energy of the sun. So today we'll talk about what is vitamin D and what does it do in the body and what can we do to make its level normal in the body to sustain bone health and holistic health. Those of you who are interested in the written materials on this subject can go to our website www.foodlifestylebalance.com. Now, as I said, that vitamin D deficiency is a pandemic. 50% of the world population are deficient in vitamin D. And it is said that in Indian cities, almost big cities, almost 80% of the population is deficient in vitamin D. Now, to bring awareness, to uh, vitamin D and its health benefits. November 2 has been declared World Vitamin D Day. And if you look at the word D in the logo, you will find that sun rays are emitting from it because sun is the biggest reservoir and resource for vitamin D. Now we all know that vitamin D sustains bone health. Vitamin D was discovered in 1930 and by 1930, three vitamins had already been discovered, vitamin A, B, and C. So this was the fourth vitamin discovered and it got the name vitamin D. In 1930, it was recognized that there's certain element present in the sunlight and into the fish oil like cod liver oil, which prevents rickets in children and osteomalacia in older adults. Now rickets is a disease where the bones become weak, they become soft, very painful, and become deformed. So the child has bow legs. Osteomalacia is a disease in adults where the bones become porous and fragile and break easily. And they are very painful at the same time. Now, more recent research has shown us that vitamin D not only sustains bone health, but also muscle health. Now, muscle and bones are intimately related to each other. When our muscles are active and moving, the blood flow flows into the bones. So you may take all the calcium and vitamin D in the world, but it will not go to the bones if the muscles are not moving. So exercise and activity is key to bone health as well as muscle health. Now, as I said, vitamin D has been assigned the status of super hormone because of its universal presence in the body. Most of the people think that it's only making bones strong, but it makes bones strong, muscles strong, and present in the every cell and organ of the body and is vital to health. Now, the biggest source of vitamin D, of course, is sunlight and sun rays make vitamin D in our skin. Very small amount of vitamin D comes from the food. So food overall is not a very rich source of vitamin D. 
Once the vitamin D enters our body, it is taken up by the liver and subsequently by the kidneys to make the hormone. So vitamin D, which enters our body, changes to become the hormone. First by going through the liver, then by the kidneys. Now this vitamin D hormone is key to our health. If there is deficiency of vitamin D, then several organ systems are affected. Now, vitamin D deficiency weakens our immune system and increases the risk of bacterial infections, viral infections, and cancer. Vitamin D deficiency increases the risk of diabetes because insulin hormone function and secretion is linked to vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency reduces the absorption of calcium and phosphate from the intestines. That means if vitamin D is deficient, bones don't get their calcium and phosphate. Vitamin D deficiency increases the risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. Vitamin D deficiency also affects our memory and our mood. So you can see it has a universal effect, universal presence in the body. Now, why vitamin D deficiency, deficiency has become a pandemic? For four big reasons. Number one, indoor lifestyle. A modern city dweller spends most of their day either indoor within the home or in the four walls of the office and is barely exposed to sun. Number two, many people have this fear that exposure to sunlight will make them dark. Now, Western populations are worshiping the sun. They will go in the sun as soon as they see it. But Eastern population, especially Asian population, will run away from the sun. And it's a misconception that sunlight will make you dark if you go to sunlight for vitamin D. Because best time to get vitamin D from the sunlight is in the morning hours. And in the morning hours, sun is not that strong and intense to make your skin dark. So imagine the misconception. The third big reason for vitamin D deficiency is obesity. Now, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It means it gets trapped by the fatty tissue. So it is not available for the rest of the body. Imagine, obesity is an epidemic among city dwellers around the world. And almost 30 to 50% of the population in big cities in the world are obese now. So you can imagine vitamin D deficiency and obesity epidemic are running parallel to each other. The fourth big reason for vitamin D deficiency is environmental pollution. When there is too much of pollution in the environment, enough safe sunlight, sun rays cannot enter the earth. So that is another big reason for vitamin D deficiency amongst the city dwellers. Now, nature is rich in vitamin D, but the biggest source of vitamin D is sun rays, sunlight. 80% of our daily need of vitamin D can be acquired from the sun rays, sunlight. And food is a poor source of vitamin D, especially vegetarian food. In the vegetarian food, there are only two sources where there is vitamin D. One is mushrooms and then other is yeast. And vitamin D supplements are made by sun radiating the mushrooms or sun radiating the yeast. And it's called D2. And D2 vitamin is not as effective as D3 vitamin, which we get from the sun and from the animal products. Fish oil is a very good source of vitamin D. And before the days of vitamin D supplements, cod liver oil was the mainstay in treating rickets in osteomalacia. Now, dairy milk, ghee and butter, which comes to us from the cow milk, are good sources of vitamin D only if the cow is raised naturally. It means cow is eating grass in the open fields under the sun. So calcium comes to the cow milk from the grass and vitamin D from the sunlight. But in a farm dairy milk, there is no, cow doesn't get any grass, doesn't get any sunlight. So it is deficient in calcium and vitamin D. The Western population and Western governments have caught on to it and to increase the vitamins D and calcium level of the milk, there is a public health initiative to supplement the milk 
with calcium and vitamin D. So, if you are consuming products from the farm dairy milk, you are not getting much benefit of calcium or vitamin D. Now, vitamin D, which enters the body either from sun rays and it is made in the skin by the sun rays and the food enters the body and is first picked up by the liver. In the liver, there is a chemical transformation called hydroxylation. So that hydroxyl vitamin D circulates in the blood after it has been through the liver for almost as long as two to three months. From this blood reservoir of hydroxylated vitamin D, kidney takes small portions and converts it into final vitamin D hormone, which is 2-hydroxyl vitamin D. Now, it is the vitamin D hormone which is responsible for absorption of calcium and phosphate from the intestines. It is this hormone which works in our entire body. Now, uh, let's look at what, uh, how much vitamin D is present in the natural sources. So, the best natural source, as I told you, of vitamin D is sunshine. So if a brown skin individual is exposed to sun for 30 minutes to one hour, and I said safe exposure, and we are going to talk about safe exposure soon to sunlight. Uh, so when you are exposing yourself to safe sunlight for 30 minutes to an hour, you will get 3000 units of D3, which is a very good quality vitamin D. And this is more than our body needs. But body has a very good capacity to store this natural vitamin D3 and never get overdosed with vitamin D from natural sunshine. There's a good balancing act. Amongst vegetarian sources, mushrooms, as I told you, is a good source of vitamin D and 100 gram of mushroom will give you 100 units. But if you sun dry the mushrooms, 100 gram will give you 16 times as much. That's why I said vitamin D supplement uh, from mushrooms is done by sun radiation. Wild fish is a good source of vitamin D, wild, which is grown in, the, which grows in the nature. And it has got five to six times more vitamin D than farm raised fish, simply because wild fish is eating the natural algae and natural algae is a very rich source of vitamin D. Cod liver oil used to be a major uh, vitamin D supplement before the days of uh, the different vitamin pills we are getting nowadays and one tablespoon gives about 400 to 1000 units which is the natural daily requirement of vitamin d by the body now who is at the risk of vitamin d deficiency straightforward we talked about obesity then inflammatory bowel diseases like crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis where there is swelling and inflammation of the bowel and the vitamin D absorption is reduced. The third big reason uh, for vitamin D deficiency is taking drugs like steroids, epilepsy drugs, and acid reflux medication. Now, acid reflux medication currently are being taken by vast majority of people in the cities. It is a food and lifestyle disease which can be easily managed by natural ways. If you are taking acid reflux medication for more than three, four months, then the stomach acidity is reduced. And stomach acidity is very important for absorption of calcium, vitamin D, and vitamin B12. So if you are taking acid reflux medication for more than three to four months, take for granted that you are going to have deficiency of B12, calcium, and D. So it is better to go to the natural solutions. And you can go to our website, www.foodlifestylebalance.com slash videos for video on acid reflux, medic acid reflux disease, natural solutions. And it will give you how to get over uh, this disease and get rid of these drugs in your life. Now, uh, city dwellers, as I told you, have a high uh, incidence of vitamin D deficiency because they are not being exposed to sunlight and are spending uh, most of the day indoors in the four walls of the home or the office. Then again, as I told you, that liver and kidney pay a, uh, play a vital role in converting vitamin D into super hormone vitamin D. So if you have a liver disease 
or a kidney disease, then your chances of having vitamin D deficiency are very, very high. Now, who should get vitamin D blood test to check for deficiency? Now, doctors have certain indications and conditions which if they find in a person, then they will order vitamin D levels. This is infants and children who are slow in starting to walk and they frequently fall. Most likely these children may have deficiency of vitamin D. Older adults beyond 65 years who have more falls and fractures, especially fractures of the wrist, fracture of the hip and fracture of the spine are at a high risk for vitamin D deficiency. If there is severe backache and muscle pains, you squeeze a muscle and it is hurting, it could be vitamin D deficiency. Muscle weakness and fatigue, again, could be from vitamin D deficiency. Liver and kidney disease, as I told you, vitamin D deficiency. In pregnancy and breastfeeding, there's a huge requirement of vitamin D by the body. So pregnant women and breastfeeding women are at a high risk for vitamin D deficiency. And doctors want to make sure that their vitamin D levels are normal. So somehow nowadays for prenatal care, vitamin D is frequently prescribed to pregnant and breastfeeding women. Obesity and diabetes are two diseases where vitamin D deficiency is very prevalent and doctors will frequently order vitamin D levels on these patients. Now, when we do blood testing for vitamin D levels, uh, the numbers tell us how severe is the vitamin D deficiency. If the level is below 20 nanogram per milliliter, there's severe deficiency of vitamin D. If the level is 20 to 30, moderate deficiency. And a level of 30 to 50 is normal. If the level of vitamin D is 70 and over, it means you are taking too much of vitamin D supplements and you must stop. And if the level is over 100, you are already entering in the toxic range and stop taking vitamin D supplements if the level is that high. So anything over about 70 means no need for vitamin D supplements. Now in European countries and many other countries, D level is checked and reported not in nanograms, but in millimoles. So keep in mind that millimole measure is two and a half times the nanogram measure. Now vitamin D testing has become prevalent globally because there's more awareness of vitamin D deficiency and more awareness of the great benefits of vitamin D. In the United States alone, $206 million are spent each year on vitamin D testing since 2018. And it's expected that in 10 years, these dollars are going to double. The same thing is in the rest of the world. As the vitamin D testing increases, so does the vitamin D supplement intake. Now you have the world map in front of you. And if you see the world map, the different geographic areas are depicted in green, in yellow, and in red. Green zones are the zones where vitamin D supplements are taken much more. Yellow zones, medium, and red zones, barely any. So you can see that in geographic areas of the world where sunlight is deficient, like in United States of America, Canada, Greenland, Europe, Russia, and all, there's more vitamin D supplement intake. Now, vitamin D is not deficient in the Asian countries, India and Asian countries. But despite that, vitamin D supplement intake is quite a bit. It's simply because city dwellers are not going into the sun and getting the benefit of natural sunlight. Africa and South America, the vitamin D supplement intake is much lower. Now, vitamin D plays a vital role in human health. For bone and muscle health, a lower level of vitamin D, 20 to 30 nanogram may suffice. But if you want to keep holistic health and save yourself from food and lifestyle diseases or control food and lifestyle diseases better, your vitamin D level has to be much higher, 30 to 50 nanogram per milliliter, which is considered the normal range. So when we say food and lifestyle diseases, what are the diseases we are talking about? High blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, fatty liver, um, heart problems, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome, which is mostly connected to uh, uh, 
fatty liver disease. So in all these diseases, uh, if you want to have a better control or if you want to prevent, it is better to have a vitamin D level in the normal range of 30 to 50 nanogram per milliliter. Now, vitamin D is crucial to boosting immunity. Our immune cells are protective against viral infections, bacterial infections, and cancer. It was found that patients who suffered from COVID-19 infections, if their vitamin D levels were very low, they had more severe disease and death rate was higher. So whenever there is any infection of any kind or any critically ill disease, vitamin D requirement increases tremendously. Vitamin D deficiency also is associated with autoimmune diseases. Now, what is an autoimmune disease? A autoimmune disease is a disease where body's own immune cells go on and destroy the body's normal cells. And that is not normal. And that is more of a food and lifestyle disease because food and lifestyle bring transformation in our body's tissues and, and cells. Now, what are the diseases which are included in this category? Type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a diabetes which is seen in children and in young adults. It is way more common in countries which are on high latitude, such as Northern European countries, Norway, Netherlands, and so forth. It was found that when children in those countries were given 2000 units of vitamin D, uh, then their incidence of type 1 diabetes reduced by 80%. So modern city children, as you know, are not much exposed to sunlight and type 1 diabetes is increasing very fast. So what do we do? We have to make sure our children go out and play in the sun and get the natural sunlight and vitamin D. The other diseases which are in this category are bronchial asthma, skin diseases such as psoriasis and eczema and diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. In these diseases, if the vitamin D deficiency is there, then the disease becomes worse. So to control the disease, vitamin D level has to be kept within normal limits. Multiple sclerosis is another disease, which is a disease of countries which are on high latitude. But unfortunately, this disease, which destroys the nerve cells and paralyzes a person, are also becoming common in tropical climate, where there is no deficiency of the sun, simply because people have opted for indoor lifestyle and are deficient in vitamin D. Now, inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are associated with vitamin D deficiency because vitamin D absorption is affected. Now, in these inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, there is a vicious cycle of vitamin D deficiency. Swelling and inflammation of the guts reduces absorption of vitamin D and at the same time, when vitamin D level is low, the disease becomes worse. So typically doctors will prescribe very high doses of vitamin D for patients who suffer from inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Now, vitamin D deficiency increases cancer risk. Now, certain cancers like breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer are more common. And these are the three most common cancers more common in geographic areas of the world where sunlight is deficient. But unfortunately, again, these same cancers are getting to be more prevalent in those areas of the world, such as tropics, where sunlight is abundant. So deficiency of vitamin D and high risk for cancer. Now, vitamin D deficiency is also associated with high risk for cardiovascular diseases such as high blood, high blood pressure and heart disease. And one of the reasons for that is that when there is vitamin D deficiency, insulin hormone secretion and function diminishes. And when that happens, then the risk of obesity and high cholesterol goes up. And both obesity and high cholesterol are big risk factors for high blood pressure and heart disease. Now, as I said, pregnant women and women who are breastfeeding are at very high risk for vitamin D deficiency because their requirement for vitamin D goes very high. When there is vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy, certain problems are more common. 
such as diabetes during pregnancy, high blood pressure during pregnancy, water retention during pregnancy, which together are called preeclampsia. So in preeclampsia, there's high blood pressure and water retention. And then the growth of the baby is affected seriously. And these women are more likely to have premature births. So now vitamin D supplements are very commonly given to women who are pregnant and who are breastfeeding. Now, how do we treat vitamin D deficiency? Very simple. The first step is check vitamin D levels. Do not just, if a doctor doesn't check your vitamin D level and prescribes you high dose of vitamin D, you know that is not right. So you have to know your vitamin D level to be able to figure out how much vitamin D you would need. So based on that, we know whether it's severe deficiency, moderate deficiency, or you are within the optimal range. Now, how do we improve vitamin D levels? Of course, the best way to do is safe sunlight exposure. And we are going to talk about safe sunlight exposure. 80% of our daily need of vitamin D can be had from sunlight. Then second is vitamin D rich foods. And as I told you, food is not a great source of vitamin D and about 20% of vitamin D needs are fulfilled by foods, right kind of foods. Because vitamin D is so less in the foods and the dairy milk is deficient in vitamin D, it is a common practice in Western countries to fortify milk, orange juice and cereal with vitamin D so that public gets the vitamin D. So it's a public health initiative, but not all the countries in the world practice it. Now, when the doctors see that your vitamin D level is very low, then they prescribe vitamin D supplements. Now, there are two kinds of vitamin D supplements. There are some people who are very obsessed about taking vegetarian vitamin D when they have vitamin D deficiency because they are vegetarians. Uh, but vegetarian vitamin D is vitamin D2, which is not as effective in maintaining the blood level and it doesn't last in the blood as long as does the animal-based vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 from the animals comes from the animal fat. And the most common source is lamb or sheep fat, or what we call as a lanolin. So it is extracted from lanolin. Uh, vitamin D3 pills are mostly made from this lanolin. Then there's also uh, vitamin D3 made from uh, fish oils such as cod liver oil and other fatty fishes like mackerel. Now for vegetarian, there's good news. And the good news is now we have vegan source of D3. As I told you, the wild fish get their D3 from eating algae. So now vitamin D3 is being extracted from algae. So there is algae based vitamin D3 for vegans available now. Vitamin D supplements. And we have three questions regards vitamin D su supplements. Number one is what kind should we take D2 or D3? And I already explained to you that D3 is far superior to D2 and I'll explain it a little bit more in my next slide. Next question is how much vitamin D? So far, the doctors are not very uniform in prescribing vitamin D and the some of the doctors are prescribing very high doses of vitamin D, especially for Asian patients, which can lead to very high levels of vitamin D and calcium and which are harmful to health. That the third question is, should we taking, be taking vitamin D daily or intermittently in high doses as is given frequently in Asian countries, in, especially in India, weekly sunrise vitamin D3 high dose or every month. So we will talk about that. Now, why do I say D3 from the sun is the best? Simply because vitamin D3, which we get from sunlight, stays in the blood much longer, almost three to four months. And its blood level is maintained very well within normal range. And even if you get a lot of sunlight, it will never go overboard to high levels. On the other hand, if you're taking D3 from vitamin D supplements, there is a risk that if you take too much, your level will go beyond 100 and you can have harmful effects of excessive vitamin D3 in the body. And finally, D2. The disadvantage of D2 is that it doesn't stay in the blood much longer. And number two, the blood level does not go up well enough. So the best vitamin D3 to have is 
sunlight vitamin D3, and then next, proper dose of D3 supplement. So as I said, sunlight is by far the best natural source of vitamin D3. It will meet 80% to 90% requirements of your vitamin D needs every day. Now, vitamin D supplements, as I told you, available in the market are D3 supplements, which are animal-based, and vegan supplements, which are plant-based. And nowadays, we have D3 vegan, which is made from algae, green algae. Now, how much vitamin D should we be taking every day? As I tell you that in India specifically, doctors are not uniform about prescribing vitamin D and patient mostly ends up taking very high doses of vitamin D. But keep in mind that credible societies like Institute of Medicine USA and International Endocrine Society have given us good guidelines on how much vitamin D supplement to take. And based on age, you cannot give adult dose to a child. So if the child is zero to one years, all they need is 400 to 1000 units daily and maximum dose 2000. If one to 18 years, 600 to 1000, maximum dose 2000 again. And if it is over 18, 600 to 1000, maximum dose 4000. Anything over 4000 is high dose and you cannot take it for longer time. If there is problems such as vitamin D level is very low, 10 gram, then the doctors will prescribe high dose initially. And if there is obese, obesity and digestive disorder diseases, then the recommendations are 400 to 6,000 units up to high dose of 10,000 units. Heavy dose such as 50 to 60,000 units should only be prescribed for people who are critically ill, such as in ICU. Now, should we be taking vitamin D supplements daily or intermittently? When it comes to heart medications, other vitamins such as A, B, C, we are taking daily dose. Then why this step motherly treatment for vitamin D. Why should we be taking vitamin D every month or every week in high doses? It doesn't make sense. So the ideal way to take vitamin D is 1000 to 2000 units daily, maximum 4000, especially if you have started on the low levels of vitamin D. High dose, 5000 to 10,000 units for low vitamin D should not be given for more than six to eight weeks. And after that, the patient should be brought back to 1000 to 2000 units daily. Mega dose, weekly or monthly, is not a great idea, especially for a small Asian patient. Now, who, there are patients who require mega doses of vitamin D3 daily, and these are patients who have severe disease and they are in ICU, such as very severe COVID diseases required high doses of vitamin D, and it is given in by injections. Now, too much vitamin D is not good. And don't think that high level of vitamin D in your blood is a good idea. No, it can do more harm than good. So what do we call as high, high dose vitamin D supplement? If you're taking more than 5,000 units daily of vitamin D, then there are chances that you'll get high blood levels or after maybe two to three months. If you're taking 50,000 to 60,000 units a week or per month, the calculation comes as okay over that much time duration. But the trouble is in between your vitamin D level in the blood can go very high. And what are the problems with high vitamin D blood levels? The risk of fall increases. Calcium level goes very high and the person feels very thirsty, dizzy, stomach ache, not feeling good. Whenever you're not feeling good after taking heavy dose vitamin D, then know that your vitamin D level may be too high. And then if you're taking high dose of vitamin D for a long time, you have run a high risk of getting high calcium and kidney stones. So again, I will say the most beneficial source of vitamin D is vitamin D3 from the morning sunlight. And my favorite slogan on this is, there are all kinds of light for sight, but for health, there is only one light and that is sunlight for the right reasons. Now, sunlight has been maligned for wrong reasons because the bad effects of sunlight are only there when you expose yourself to intense sunlight during the day. And the risks are early cataracts and skin cancer. If you're worried about that, 
cataract, then it is better to protect your eyes. And if you know, in Indian traditions, all the people who lived in deserts always wore very big headgears. And those headgears were protecting more their head so that their temperature doesn't go up too high. 18% of our body surface area is in the head and face and their eyes. And in modern times, we have fancy things like hats and goggles. So if you're worried about that, then you can always protect yourself with hats and goggles. Skin cancer is not a risk in Asian population. Simply they have melanin pigment in their skin and it's very protective against cancer. Skin cancer on exposure to sunlight is more of a risk in white race who have no melanin pigment in their skin. And it's only a problem when somebody exposes themselves to intense sun for longer periods. So there are rules and safe times for sun exposure. And a simple rule is if you stand under the sun and your shadow is longer than your height, then it is a perfect time to get sun exposure for vitamin D. And if you look at the time, this time is best in the morning hours, two hours to, for two hours, and in the evening hours for two hours. So two hours after sunrise and two hours before sunset. In winter, the sun is not that intense. So this two hours morning time can be extended longer to three to four hours. So you can have 30 minutes to one hour exposure based on the color of your skin uh, on under the safe sunlight exposure rules as I just described to you. All you have to do is check your shadow. Now there are simple rules to safe sun exposure and that is as we know that vitamin D is made our, in our skin when the sun rays hit the skin or UVB rays of the sun. But if our body is all covered with clothing, then UVB rays cannot enter the skin and no vitamin D will be made. So for making appropriate amounts of vitamin D in the skin, you have to expose at least 40% of your skin, arms and legs. And uh, uh, if you do not, if you are worried about getting dark, you can always wear a hat and protect your face. Suntan lotion is not a good idea for optimal vitamin D. Uh, synthesis under the sun simply because sun tan lotion especially very high SPF 35 and over will cause blockage of the UVB, rain, uh, UVB rays of the sun entering the skin. So sun tan lotions is not a great idea and we don't even need the sun tan lotions if we are following the safe rules of exposing yourself to sun in the morning hours two hours after sunrise and two hours before the sunset. Now, what is the duration of sun exposure for optimal vitamin D synthesis? It depends on the color of the skin. If the skin is very fair, such as in white race, then 15 to 30 minutes of sun exposure is perfect and it will give you two to 3000 units of uh, vitamin D. If the skin is brown, 30 to 60 minutes. If the skin is very dark, then one to two hours. And if you are older, 60 plus, than one to two hours simply because when one gets older the synthesis of vitamin d under the skin by sun rays diminishes now there are several advantages to getting vitamin d from sunlight number one and the most important you can never overdose body has a balancing act and keeps the vitamin d three level from the sun under normal levels it provides superior quality vitamin d3 which lasts in the bloodstream for a longer time, three to four months. If you expose yourself to just three to four days per week, it will be enough because at each sitting, you may get two to 3000 units, which is more than your body needs. Our body's daily needs are 800 to 1000 units in adults. Optimal exposure will give you, as I told you, as high as 3000 units. Now, benefits of the sunlight extend way beyond vitamin D synthesis. It is the sunlight which balances our lifestyle. The 24 hour day and night cycle of the sun are called circadian cycle. And these do the balancing act on our body's systems. When the morning sunlight enters the eyes, 
it stimulates special nerve cells in our brain. These special nerve cells work as a brain clock. This brain clock is connected to each and every organ of our body. During the daytime, all the organs are active and in the night, they go into sleep mode, rest, repair and rejuvenate. And if that rest, repair and rejuvenate period is affected, the body cannot be healthy. So this balancing act of brain clock controls three important essential lifestyle behaviors. Number one, when to sleep, when to wake up, when to eat, when to fast, when to be active and when to rest. When human beings or any living being will not stay within this circadian rhythm, then they get disease. And as you know, all the animals and living beings on the planet, including the plants, they live within the circadian rhythm of the sun. Now, sunlight also affects our sleep and mood. Simply because when the morning sunlight enters through the eyes to our brain, two hormones are synthesized in our brain. One is called serotonin, which is a happy hormone. And second, melatonin, which is the rejuvenating sleep hormone or deep sleep hormone. In fact, serotonin and melatonin are interconnected. Melatonin is synthesized from serotonin. In the geographic areas of the world where sunlight is deficient and doesn't, there's no sun for weeks and months in a row, in those countries, there's high incidence of depression and suicides. So keep in mind that sunlight is the eternal life source, not for just human, for, for the living beings, plants in the entire universe. Whether these plants and animals are on the earth or, or under the sea. So Hindu culture or Hindu Sanskriti has given sunlight the status of God, a divine status, Surya Devta. So whatever you do, keep in mind that for your health, to preserve your health and prevent disease, there is no light as powerful as the sunlight. So keep in connection with the sun for your health. Namaskar.